Why don't we start? Hi, this is Tom Berninger. We are. Are you not hearing anything? I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. This is Tom Berninger, and uh, take one of your ears off. So you, you are can... watching the Mistaken for Strangers commentary. Are you listening to that? Should we start this over? Um, no, it's fine. This is that was our transition from crowd clapping to shoe hitting pole Please trick. Stop that. I can't think of I think that was my idea. What well, you're hearing in the background is saying, yo, yo, JJ, go deep, go deep. You're not going to get sunburned, Matt. Actually, my, this is my favorite shot because I love that one red tree in the background. What one red tree? Well, it was in the shot before, right behind your, your ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I never really uh, noticed that. Hold on, hold on, let me just think of it. That's me, Matt Bernier, lead singer of the National. Do you, uh, do you ever get, I mean, on tour, it's day in and day out. Um, but do you ever get, does that, does that ever make you sleepy on stage? Um, we're tired, tired on stage. I had a broken foot because I fell out of my bunk. Number one, is, is the, uh, and uh, we're on tour with Arcade Fire, and and I jumped out of the bunk in the middle of the night, and I landed on my toe. Um, so I had to do about five shows opening for Arcade Fire with a medical shoe on. Was that a big letdown for Arcade Fire? Why, were they were embarrassed by my medical shoe? No, no I think they thought it was... Just that, just that their opening act was less energetic than they... I was energetic. I was just wearing a funny shoe. Um, it was... Guests anyway, today in we did fine. Uh, the National. We're about to talk to a band called The National. They've been critical darlings for the last 10 years or so, but now they're finally achieving some commercial success. Yes, the secret is out. This is one of the most talked about bands. This is Gian Gomeshi. Please welcome to the program, The National. Your applause for The National. It is the smartest dress band on the red right carpet. That's in London when we won a uh, Q Award. Um, and the award ceremony is sponsored by Absolute. That was the first thing we ever won. And you've been profiled in Rolling Stone, GQ. You were recently the subject of a 10 page. Our friend Yoon Ri did all these graphics. This is probably the slickest looking. This is the, this is the only good looking stuff in the movie. Everything else is done really cheaply. Yeah, we spent money on this part. But then there's you, Matt. Uh, you're the guy in the band who doesn't have a brother. I, I speaking, I'm speaking to Jesse Thorne there from Bullseye. Also used to be the host of uh, uh, Sound of Young America, but they changed the name to Bullseye. Uh, that's good. Uh, I don't think he does think of it. You're, so you were kind of trying to be sarcastic with this line, though. Everybody asks me about this line, about like, I, don't, I never said whether or not you rock actually was pretentious bullshit. You were just trying to... Uh, you were trying said to, that before. You were trying to give I a good interview. I think I've interview. heard you say that about... Many, many times, in fact, so no. Hmm. No, you're wrong. That's my, that's my big wheel. <laughs> that's, Tom. that's how Tom got to work before he got fired. That's me, my sister, my dad, my mom. That is our sister. That's, that's the only moment you see yeah, Rachel, our older sister, in the film. Oh, um, only because uh, the interviews Tom did with her were... were she lives in Seattle. We're brief, and she was um, she was giving some Tom some tough love, um, and because he was kind of being a whiner, and um, in the film Tom goes through such such bad things happened to him. It was it was too hard to use it because uh, we needed um, uh, we, we we she had to show Tom some more sympathy than in the film, so we we couldn't use use her interviews. Anyway, she's she's awesome and. Uh, she loves the movie. And she loves the movie, but I have to say, she was, she's not hurt, but she was like, we didn't know this movie was going to be so family-oriented when we originally made this thing. No, not until the very end. And not until the very end. Anyway, yeah. Rachel, the next movie is going to be about you. So these, I have seen Tom's full movies. Um, Wages of Sin. That's Wages of Sin. The other one, um, they are really really good they, well um they're not for what they're not they they're not great <laughs> but i shot them in montana when i went to uh school out there no you used you used montana you used, you used absolutely i was in bozeman montana and i'm like why don't we just go shoot a movie on top of that mountain and just bring a lot of fake blood and and animal skins yeah which is which is smart they're they're 
they're about 20 minutes long and they, they, they they're seem, 10 minutes long they're 10 minutes long and they seem like about 45 minutes long that song you're just listening to was uh, Slough Feg, uh, Addendum was that, Galactus. Was that, what, oh, that's Addendum Galactus. Addendum Galactus. Galactus. Slough Feg, awesome metal band from San Francisco. This is where we're in Shake It Records, awesome indie, indie music store in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, uh, and, and the north side. Um, the only side. Owned by Jim Blaze, right? Jim, Jim and, and, uh, and uh, Jim Blaze and his brother. Jim Blaze and his brother. Um, Those guys were happy enough to let us. We never got their permission either. We never got their permission, so they can sue. Yep. Actually, if we say that and they see this, then they might actually sue. Please, never mind. They'll, they'll legally, sue us. Legally, you can't sue. It's a documentary, so guys. Yeah, it's for the public good. It's for the public. It's a so it's public a service Public film. service documentary. That's, that's our parents' minivan. Never had that when we were growing up. They bought that after all the kids moved out of the house. It's weird. Yeah. Then, they, then they bought a minivan. <laughs> they bought, bought a minivan when they were 60. Like my new camera? You're not supposed to do that. Now. I know, I know. Hey guys, good. The whole band we're still not exactly sure if you are legally allowed to film in an airport like that. I don't think you can. Um, I think you can. No, no, I think you cannot because they. It's, they think people at terrorists are doing surveillance or something like that. So, <laughs> terrorists casing the joint. Anyways, I'm not sure why my face is so red in that shot. Um, I purposely altered the color scheme to make it really red. Red filter. Yeah. This is Paris. Um, that is a real live Paris mime. He's he's since passed. Away. I've always liked this shot because so it's, he's not live. A lot anymore. of people like that shot. I'm just kidding. It, I'm, we don't know. I'm sure he's fine. It's, I love the crystal ball. It's like foretelling the future. Yeah. Who is that? My skin is as wet as that pillow. You do look a, a tad pasty. Who are you on the phone or are you with? Uh, I, believe, uh, I think it's the Libé. Liberation. Liberation. The, they call it the Libé. I wonder if anybody knows I'm eating French fries That's in Paris. We've learned to channel, I think, oh. I never actually yeah. noticed that. I was really enjoying the fact that I was eating French fries in Paris. That's where they're from. Stop. Um, how fast can you play? I must say, all the guys were totally, totally cool with me kind of invading their space. This was like the day after a show, and he just got out of a shower, and I knocked on his door, and he was totally willing to hang up the phone with his wife and play some stupid guitar for me on a bed, like Jerry Garcia or something. And then Bryce doing this. This I was always wondered why, because you tell him to act like he's picking up his sunglasses, but he... Well, because I realized I said got, that, because got I realized... Head. Look. <laughs> So he puts him on down by the when his down by the, by his legs. I just felt like when I told him to come no, down and come up. No, but he comes up and he's already got him on. If you picked up your sunglasses, it's like he yeah yeah he like would put, well, he would stand up then put him on. But he, he never, honestly didn't take my direction. He never I, took I him realized on. I was not going to get him to look any cooler than that. <laughs> All right. I have a little thing here. Any of any of your national fans out there? I never knew the girl voice. And some of the national songs is actually Brian. Well, he sings high harmonies a lot, but it, um, I think Ben Lands and Kyle Resnick, uh, mm -hmm. trombone and trumpet respectively, sing most of the higher stuff. And here we have Brandon Reed, who is actually a good friend of mine. We don't really talk all that often, but we really cut him to make be pretty look pretty awful in this yeah. movie. He's an awesome guy. He comes across as a villain in this movie. Um, but uh, I had put him in a very bad position by forcing him to hire you, Tom, as his assistant, and you weren't cut out for that kind of a job. It's a really hard job. So uh, when things went badly, it was you were both in, in kind of a, sh uh, a crappy uh, situation that I had created. 
Um, but he's a good guy. He's a good guy. But he is a badass, and he and he runs yeah. everything like a like a military operation. He has to. And I would say this: ever since Brandon came became part of our band, um, like nine years ago, that's when things started working for our band, and our live show became better, and all these kind of things. It's uh, he has he's been instrumental in in helping us become a good band. Um, he is all business, though. He is all beeswax. This is literally the first day of shooting. I mean, that no, was, not the first day of shooting, the first, first day in Europe. First day in Europe, but this is pretty much my first. I, yeah, there was one day I was on tour. The actual I first didn't. day, let me just, I'll just say this. The actual first day you, you were on and working for the band, you were asked to pull a U-Haul truck up onto um, a sidewalk so we could unload into a venue. and. Uh, this is the day one, and you're, you get paid like a hundred bucks a day or something like that. And so your first job you're asked to do is pull this U-Haul truck up to the loading dock of a thing along the sidewalk. You pulled onto the sidewalk like a block too early. Um, I'm not sure why you did that, but you slowly drove down the sidewalk, and uh, then you tore the awning off of a, off the front of a of a store next I didn't, to the well, venue. You know, you're not used to driving U-Hauls in, in New York City. You forget about the clearance. This thing had a 14-foot clearance, which is, which is higher than most. Right. Yeah. I just don't know why you, you went to the end of the block to, to, to pull up onto <laughs> the sidewalk. Anyways, this is, the, and this is 100% true that, that the store that Tom tore the awning off of was a store that made awnings. It was an awning store. And so it was like Sam's Awnings, and, this, and Tom crumpled and destroyed this, this awning. Um, and we ended up having to pay uh, like, like at two grand or something like that to fix, fix the awning, to pay for this awning. And so Tom's first day on the job, he cost the band uh, uh, $2,000, um, which is whatever. Pennies. Pennies to the national. No, I know, but it was like, it was weeks of your salary. <laughs> I'm hoping everybody can hear my brother because he's hooked his microphone up on over his shoulder. What are you coming? It's pointing at your shoulder, not at your like. All right, hold on. I mean, I'm getting a level here. I'm this is what I had to deal with every day on tour. Is like. I'm not the technical. I didn't have to. I wasn't told I had to do anything technical today. I'm getting levels, but it's just who knows what you sound like. Can you hear me? Probably. Yes, I can hear you better. That's a little. Hello? Thank you. Good. I thought you were watching the movie, not listening to the commentary. I'm not listening. I'm watching the movie. I'm, I'm just crossing my fingers. Everything's gonna be okay. All right. <sighs> I lost my train of thought. You're just finishing your the awning store. All right. Did I finish it? Yeah. Um, to to all national fans out there, um, the the one of the reasons why there's not a lot of live music in this movie is because I was on tour with one camera and I was trying to do another job at the time um, and I just didn't get coverage I just could not I couldn't it was it was technically impossible for me ever to shoot a good live moment or a good you know even get good recordings so I didn't even, I didn't even try what you're seeing is like one-offs and then occasionally I had a friend on tour that that would um, bring his camera along or we rented a camera and would have two cameras but for 99% yeah. of the tour I was shooting side stage. Hey, give me an idea. We should we should hire somebody to make a documentary about us, about the band. <laughs> I think that would be. Well, that's a, that's the, you still have an opportunity to make actually a, a good documentary about you guys. <laughs> this is this You'll is see what here my, there's, a, there's a flaw in the editing. The pattern of Mr. November's I won't. It's not quite. It's not quite right. The pattern of the screamings of Mr. November that won't fuck us over, won't fuck us over. November. I never liked how I was originally yeah, so done. You edited I, it. I, you edited it, and, and it changed. It was fine. But I just every time I watch that, it's like I get confused. Amazing. You know, I captured some pretty good stuff. I know a lot of people. Your have done job it. description. If you check your job description, stop taping. This is in London, um, and who is shooting this? Um, I don't know who was shooting. Maybe Stu or Stu is our is our monitor engineer and production manager. Um, so Tom would give the camera to people occasionally and try to 
put himself into the film as much as possible. This was way before he, he realized he was, the movie was going to be about him. He just wanted to make a tour diary. Um, at this point, Tom had no, I, no, am I right? You had no intention of making a film at this point. Oh, this, can we just be honest? This Those is not London. Those girls are hot. Oh, yes, what? this is not okay. London. That moment right there is actually, we made it look like it was in London, but it's actually Portland, um, but it just fit there. How famous do you think anyway, you are? That's how the sausage is. Uh, that's how Tom makes sausage. I imagine you're holding a Rubik's Cube. About that famous. As, as famous as a Rubik's Cube? As, as big as a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> you, are, you are way more famous than any of my friends. That's true, but less famous than the <laughs> Rubik's Cube. <laughs> the Rubik's Cube is more. Just stand right there. Okay. That is actually Scott's you know, is own car I need more handsome shots in, his, in the garage of his apartment. Yep. Not his chairs. We don't know whose chairs those were. Whose that's, car is that? That's Where my favorite is? shot of the movie, by the way. That's your favorite shot? Why? Yeah. I just, it's cool. I just like that. I just, I think it's. What was it you were about to sit on? A table. <laughs> an, end, an end table. Where did you see the National in like 50 years? 50 years? <laughs> I think 40 years. I think, I, I don't know. This. Why is it so hot in here? Years. Mm-hmm. You guys don't have air conditioning. Yes, we are we are watching this uh, in our house on Tom's laptop. Tom still lives. I here. love his plants. That's I love my I my framing here. Where I have those pointy plants. This every so often, there's one that gets so close to his eye. I, I like I like to like I like to have an element of danger in every uh, interview I have. People often ask uh, Tom's questions. Um, those are actually his questions. That, that they weren't, they weren't scripted questions. He knew. I think you knew they were kind of funny. Well, I, the, the whole ID thing was the, the whole ID thing was mainly the. I just find it hilarious, especially with actors and famous people that like. When, this does, is like Russell Crowe in like in a, a movie. You know, have a walled on him his ID. Right. You know. Right. I don't know. I mean, it's just. I bet he does. In when Ga you guys Gladiator? are when, does, like when you're out when rock is Russell Crowe wearing when he plays Stop Noah? Playing. Does he have his wallet in his in yes. his pants when he's playing Noah? Yeah. I bet he doesn't. This is outside of London. Up. Let's take a Toblerone chocolate. You know, it's like what you didn't ask for Toblerone like last week. You know, and there's not even on a rider. But I was supposed to pick, even though you know that venue had Toblerone, you know, on you know, on the counter. Like, oh, I didn't know you really wanted it in the bus. I'm not going to take every single piece of food that's in your dressing room and also put Reynolds wrap over it and stick it on a bus. So this, this little bit is from... Kind Nobody of laughs at my Toblerone man. joke, by the way, which is my it's favorite true. joke of the movie. It's true. Nobody one of our it. favorite jokes of... One of the famous... Not favorite jokes, but favorite... Uh, f yeah. We thought it was a very funny thing is him bitching about the Toblerone. And it's been screened... Um, we've gone to many, many screenings now, and no one laughs at that. Except for, uh, uh, I mean, yeah. a few people. Once in a while, you'll hear, you'll hear a chuckle, but but we fought so hard to keep the Toblerone scene in, and um, maybe we could have let it go. I still. I, I, I wish. I'm glad we didn't. And it's a it's a it's a slow burn. We were hoping to get a Toblerone endorsement to to release the film. Toblerone. Kyle and Ben. Toblerone Films. Kyle Resnick. And Ben Lands um, and Padma, Padma Newsom, um, um, they were all ama amazingly gracious to let us to let Tom be in their kitchens constantly. Yes. Um, and Padma is an amazing cook, and he hates when people are in his kitchen. <laughs> so another live moment, which uh, sounds pretty shitty. But all right. I want to say um, you'll be seeing a lot of when you see live stuff. The coolest part about it is often our uh, our light show. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you would agree. This guy Michael Brown and Ben Crawl um, designed and built our whole light show.
There's my lovely wife, Corinne, who helped Tom edit the whole film. Um, sat behind him for a year, helping him out of the And she weighs about 80 woods. pounds, and it literally it was like 78 degrees out, and she was wearing that coat. What? No, she does not weigh 80 pounds. But she's like, it's like, we, it was not even that cold out. I remember her wearing her, her huge winter jacket. I'm like, I remember being you're, cold. You're, like, that you're night. like a rock star wife, dressed little. <laughs> what do you want her to wear? Tube top? No, it, it was, was not, freezing. Not, not, it was not 70 degrees. It was 70 degrees out. Okay, great. I'm trying to explain how she helped you make the movie, and you're complaining about her clothing choice. <laughs> yeah, she, she literally sat behind Tom in our house while Tom was living here trying to edit this thing and figure it out and, and guided him um, out, of the, out of the darkness, I would, I would venture to say. Tom says nothing. Well, moving on. Oh. What, Corinne? No, I don't know. No, I'm watching the scene. I, I, like, I, the, our movie moves fast. We can't dwell on one subject matter. <laughs> Thanks, Corinne. You did, actually did help. So what we're talking about, we, the, this, Tom did fall See, down like, in a bodega. Uh, wait, let me explain. Right. People ask, like, the allergy. What we're talking about is alcoholism. Alcoholism. Um, who, by the way... The rest of the guys in the band drink a lot more than I do. No, I, that's, that's not necessarily true. It's not true. But um, if you look closely, you can see his penis in that last shot. If you pause it and, and put it through a um, sharpened filter, fil like unsharp filter, mm -hmm. or whatever you call that thing. Well, if you... Sharpen. I'm sure you can... Unsharp mask. You can do some CSI. If you do a CSI thing, you will be, get a crystal clear uh, image. Of Brian's penis. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't mean to pry, but it's about the size of that thermos over there to his, to his, to his <laughs> left. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Brian, Brian is a man of uh, selective words, um, and so here he is attempting to answer Tom's intrusive questions. Here, here, Brian um, indulges Tom. Let me ask you a question. Did you know your cigarette was backward when you put that in your mouth? Were you trying to be goofy? Um, a magician never tells his secrets. No, I don't know if I did. I was, I was wasted in this shot. Oh yeah, this totally. One, you totally were wasted. In fact, right now you, I don't know where. This is the scene that that, that Corinne first saw, and she's like, "This is, this is what this movie should be about." So, Actually, Rob Halford was apparently really, really cool. <laughs> um, not apparently, he was awesome by letting us use the song. It was, and um, he's one of my idols. Priest was like my favorite band when I was in high school. This is uh, actually two dudes playing tennis in Krakow, and, and um, we originally had that written as uh, Warsaw because we couldn't remember where it was, and, and a bunch of people and I didn't, from Krakow I didn't. saw a festival version and told us we were wrong, so thank you for helping us. Here's Brandon giving Tom a dressing down, if you will. Just keep it in mind that everything we use, and everything we use, we go for. Okay. Yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. That's Heather Ryan and Don Barger in there, you briefly saw. By the way, right after that scene where he dresses me down, as they say, we talked about T2. We totally broke down about Terminator 2. Yes, which sure, I sure. Cut Brandon's out. a nice guy. He's not a, not a dick. Um, but so here's Tom. The person shooting all this is uh, Taylor Fitzgerald, uh, my good friend from Montana State University. Did, did Taylor help you make Wages of Sin? Yes, he did. Oh. So did Randy Glander. Uh, for doing this, for just for just filming. I feel like I feel like the only reason why he thinks I'm on tour is because I'm your brother. Here, here's the truth. The only reason you are here is because you. That is not true. That's not true. That is true. That, that is, is not true. true. What are you talking about? That is not true because. 
I, I was. Listen I was, to what I'm saying here. That's the truth. What are you talking about? It's not true. What? I was here to to make small videos at the time for your website. That's also the reason why I was here. Yeah, but but you got you got that job and the other job because you're my brother. We didn't hire well, we didn't hire like you as a that's filmmaker. Why, that's why that's why that's why to make a well, documentary. Jesus, that's why Aaron, I mean, is, half this band is there because they're fucking brothers. Weird that I'm <laughs> That's true. Half the band exists. That's true, but they're all like really talented. Yes, like, I, I'm a really talented. No, I know, but this we had no idea that you were a talent at this point, a talented filmmaker. Okay. I mean, <laughs> so the reason you got the job was because you're my brother. You made the most of That's it. That's why everybody else got the fucking job too. No, they they know how to play instruments and are. are uh. Brian always would give the camera the finger, not because he was like pissed off at me, just because he, whenever he saw the camera, he occasionally that's his, would, that's his thing. That's man. his thing. That's his thing. He was not being a dick to me. He hates cameras. He loves me though, but he hates cameras. So he was kind of in a predicament. <laughs> the song here is um, is a, the sketch version was called Helsinki. Um, which turned into the song um, Hard to Find on our new record. Our new record uh, by The National, Trouble Will Find Me, out May 2013. It's now, uh, it's actually May 2014 right now, so this record's a year old. Anyway. My Alfred Hitchcock shot. That's Andre Elam, who um, is a, an amazing guitar tech. And, and, um, and later, a badass. Total badass. Later, you'll see me uh, sit on his head. And uh, if any film fans out there, he used to kind of, he kind of works for Something Weird Video. He's a big kind of um, cult movie fan, and he works. He kind of curates a lot of Something Weird Video. Um, you know, if you ever. You ever, went to, you ever went to Kim's video in New York City? You know what? You know it's something weird. A video. So is this about. is uh, Los Angeles. Yes, it's Los Angeles, um, as the film says. They didn't need our commentary to know that. This, the place we're staying, however, is not a hotel. We wrote Matt's hotel in Los Angeles because it was, seemed uh, confusing to explain that when we were in Los Angeles for the Hollywood Bowl show. Uh, my whole family came out, and everybody came out, and, and Corinne's family came out, and my sister came down, and we all, we just rented a big house. But to explain that in a small caption would have been too much, so we just said Matt's Hotel. And that is Moby's house. That is Moby's house, his, by the his way. castle. Hey, Moby! <laughs> you don't have to. You what, to, are you going to yell at me again? I'm just saying. Don't, don't yell to, in the commentary? Well, you don't have to, the, <laughs> you don't have to yell along. Annie Clark, also known as St. Vincent, totally brilliant. Um, uh, yeah, she and Tom got along really well. Yep. She's actually very, very cool. And I like her music. And I believe she's drinking whiskey out of that wine glass. Um, whiskey on ice. That's her, that's her jam. Annie Clark and Sharon Van Etten were the two most beautiful women I have ever seen, at least on that tour. And they're incredibly talented and awesome. At least on a tour. That's at least weird. on a tour. Everything you just said is weird. Um, here is... Okay, so here's... Here... This is in Pomona. This, this is actually, weirdly, is in Pomona, which is just south of L.A. Um, but... Um, Tom lost the guest list. However, it turns out that they were not actually outside. I don't want to ruin it, but they 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 had they were recognized and they were allowed to come in. So even though the front of house did not have a guest list, um, they figured someone had fucked up and let Werner Herzog and the cast of Lost in. Uh, Jeremy Davies um, is the one who brought Werner Herzog um, because they did Rescue Dawn together, and Jeremy Davies, who's also in Lost, is. A really, really uh, great, funny, and, and amazing actor. And anyway, he's, he, he, uh, he, I think, 
we played a lot of the national on the on the, the set of Lost and um, got a lot of those guys into our band and got uh, Werner Herzog to come to the show. Later, Werner Herzog uh, talked with us about making a video um, and we were excited about that and he wanted us to play uh, on, the, on the edge of a live volcano, which he wanted to be sure he's like, you, he wanted to be very dangerous for us. And he said, you, you might get hurt and I, and you need to understand that. And um, we were okay to do that, but it never happened. Here, I was uh, totally stressed out, as you can see. And it was, sometimes we don't know whether our shows are good or bad. And well, the thing of it is, I always got it wrong. It's like whenever I was side stage, and of course I was almost drinking every single night. And whenever I thought it was a great show and kind of awesome and rocking and great, everyone's like, oh, it was a really bad show. And then when I thought it was, for me, I, when, it, when the shows that I thought were a little bit like, I don't know, uh, tame, everyone's like, that's an amazing show, good job. Oh, good job, everybody. So I never got it right. I never got it right which was a good show or a bad There's show. There's Werner Herzog and his wife, and she's a photographer. Um, and Tom uh, was too nervous to enter the room. So I did to get to shake his hand, I'll get it to you. I'll get it to you. and, and then also hand. then show him where the waters were. Is it for, is it for like Sitting next to Don Barger, our manager, is Tom Wernin, um, who uh, also works for our team, and, and he works for post postdoc management. A great guy. He also manages um, bands on his own. Who's been asking about me? Nobody. Nobody yet. Okay. That wasn't true. Everybody okay. was asking what the okay. hell's going on. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. I was also asking myself. What the hell's going on? I've been hearing that there's some doubt or concern. Price Hill Entertainment. That was that is my production company with my friend Randy uh, from Cincinnati. Price Hill is a, is a little neighborhood in Cincinnati where I went to high school. Talk about the film how, about Wages of Sin. Wages of Sin. Um, it's about a barbarian with an identity crisis. He doesn't know how to speak, and he's and in this moment of the movie, he's trying to fight his way to his friend who's chained up. And but his he doesn't make it in time. His friend dies, and he can't that, speak. That, where's his, where's his friend? Right there. there. There's that's Randy. That's, that's Randy. Randy. That's Randy. Randy Glandorf. He's my co-collaborator in all my earlier films. Um, anyways, as you see, he kills and, and Who really plays the barbarian. Uh, oh, Chris Basil, by the way. He, he and he is awesome. He is a great guy in Bozeman, Montana. Um, he's a he's a real. Um, he loves he loves reading. He's a mo he's a reader, not a barbarian. <laughs> this is 2010. It was midterm elections. We were invited uh, by the Obama administration to play at this this rally, um, and. Um, I love it. I love it how uh, in my own editing. Um, Obama opens for you guys. Oh yeah, in reality, we played before <laughs> Obama, and then Obama came out. <laughs> this guy was intense. Oh yeah. I, literally, right name? now, right now, I'm walking with the camera as the White House aide has has a hand on my shirt, just like easing me across this area. Like I, I someone's holding me, like my like the, my belt, so I don't move too fast. No, he was snipers, doing that because the snipers knew that you yeah, were with. There the are people on the roofs that are like. There they are. Here come the snipers. Here, here are the snipers walking through. The, there were there were about twenty snipers. You just saw one of well, them. Well, you only saw by. one of them, but the twenty snipers, in like full black gear, walked by right before we uh, met the president. I think they do that on purpose to scare the shit out of everybody. Yeah. Right before they meet the president, um, which worked. Yeah, Tom. Was shuffled away. That's Ben Harper, right back there, mm -hmm. holding a, holding the green guitar case. And in fact, in this next room, in this room right here, where I'm trying to look for the, look that for is, the president. That, wait, pause for a second. I love the, the fact that you think that fat, short, white guy is is Barack Obama. No, that's not. We were in Ben Harper's um, little area, and he was re and and we were eating all his food, and he didn't. He wasn't angry. He just was. No, he was a nice uh, guy. He's like, by the way, you you enjoy my M and M's and. and uh, he was a nice guy. He, he busted you eating. He busted me eating all of them. Ben Harper did. Yeah, he was cool about it. An anyway, uh, so was Barack Obama. Uh, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't. Didn't meet him. You'll meet him someday. They probably did a background check and like found Tom had a DUI for like ten years. So Tom had a DUI. To explain your DUI. Ugh. They didn't even check you Never mind. It's. He, I was, was driving there, somebody a, else far drunker when I got home, and I had a tail light out, and I was being uh, honest. Never mind. Don't Even describe it. This, yeah. don't, I don't need to talk about that. Growing up, it never liked that. You know, 
That's me when I'm wearing braces. Yep. Uh, you you always had nice teeth. Did you wear braces? I wore braces. I oh, lost all those teeth, and they came out came in to like Freddy Krueger. Mm. I love my Simpsons shirt. If you notice that Simpsons shirt, a bootleg Simpsons shirt that was from your big your the big Little Sibs Sibs weekend at Miami. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite costume. These are all Tom's. These aren't even Halloween. That's what's weird. Tom just wouldn't do that. <laughs> there I am. Mother's Day. I also want to say that is true. I won first place in my um, high school. Not high school. That goes by so quickly. Science I don't fair. Think I people even see that? What? My How first colors place generate different responses. It's a good thing. I won first place. I won blue ribbon. But I want to say that I, this moment represents the fact that I was a big jock. I was kind of good at sports, but anybody who at all. I, I've had friends from grade school and high school that saw and just laugh out loud because I was not a golden boy. Um, I was competent, um, ultimately terrible at sports. Once again, Bryce is talking about, and we are not even talking about Bryce. <laughs> Should we rewind? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Bryce was. was, was Let's see what he has to say. All right. Can we just? I want to say for the record, Bryce was the best, possibly the best oh, yes. sport about the, the, you making this film the he whole totally time. He totally got the movie. He understood what you were trying to do, and he totally he knew that that was kind of funny. Yes. And all, and all, honestly, Bryce, Bryce is brilliant. knew 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 what to say there because he thought, knew it would be kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so. Basically. So here we are. Back, right, at, right after he says that, we all cracked up. There's my thing. pharmaceutical boot shoe. Um, and there's, I don't know why I have that green ball. I'm actually really proud of this camera. This Canon is gets incredible resolution. Look at the, look at your nose. <laughs> why are you you're proud of the camera? You didn't make the camera. I'm, I'm, yeah. This is Prospect Park. Oh, you already heard you saw that. Never mind. Look, look at the red tree behind it, the, the, le the uh, left side of mess. mess. So here, I want to explain for a minute here. This. this. Let me, let me well, talk about this. I, let me just say. Go ahead. Well, it's a bus. And you got a bathroom. People walk into the bathroom when you don't know. So the, answer, the question, where were you swimming? The answer is... I was, I was showering with my bathing suit on because people walk in all drunk willy-nilly. And I don't want people to see me naked like anybody. You don't have to lock on the door. You don't have to shower with your but bathing still, suit on. But still, I was showering with my bathing suit on, which willy -nilly. any normal person would be doing that. I think you were just. I don't think you like. I think you're a never nude. <laughs> I'm not a never nude. I'm just saying I'm a never nude on a fucking tour bus. All right, that's the All first right. swear word I think. All right. Look away. You have to beep this stuff. Okay, now, no. Act like you've just got a really good idea. Like have a thought. Like wait, a, like, wait, a, wait a second. Do that. And say, wait a second. Um, the reason why I was doing this is because I thought I had a different. I I didn't. I had a different movie in my head. Yeah, no, which is probably yeah. half this movie. I don't know. He's like, he's he. I, he frustrates me at times, but then at other times he surprises you, and it's like anybody. Like nobody's perfect. Has he ever blown up? Has he has he ever lost his temper with you? Yes. I I, I guess I, maybe. <laughs> But explain. I'm gonna grab myself some wine. One explain. weird little thing you see, you see Tom's reflection up in that the reflection on the glass of that painting. Um, wasn't the weird done the movie that we noticed? There's Tom's reflection happens like in many many places throughout the movie. In my parents' house, in the Paris Hotel, in there, in that shot. Where else? Um, there's also a weird undercurrent of. Uh, of, gore, of, of yeah, of, of gore, like a horror imagery, like severed limbs. Um, you know, obviously Tom's films, but his drawings, and then his T-shirts. This is a true story that Aaron's telling. Obviously, um, I kept trying to redo it, and he wanted to keep an old original version, and I did get really angry. It is terribly frightening. I don't think it's so frightening. You've got a serious problem with anger. I think it's fine. You, I, I must say, my brother has a has a problem with anger. A problem with of getting of just having a temper. Everybody gets angry, but that's I, a different thing. 
if I would have a problem with anger if I bottled it up. I, I let it out. I, so well, I think I have no problem with anger. <laughs> I might have a temper I problem. I bottle it up, and I am a crier. My, Matt <laughs> never cries. I'm, I'm serious. I cry all the time. Matt never cries. He just screams. Tom's a never nude. I'm a never cry. Yeah. Um, do you want, do and Tom you cries all the time. Do you want me to bring them drinks, and then... Do you want me to... Okay, this next scene. I'm not 100% sure... The, these people were actually very happy with me filming them. Yeah, they were. They were fine with it. Are you sure? They've been, they've been nothing but like, like totally cool about it. Yeah, of course. Well, no, they were. No, Will and Abby was super, super fine with that. Yeah. Well, Will and I don't think John Krasinski, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. John Krasinski seems pretty cool with it. They did and not know we were filming. I don't think. By the yeah, well, no, of course they did. Will and I was super cool, but. Will or not, yes, he gave his permission on camera in the movie. Does that make sense? Somewhat. So legally we're fine, but he's totally fine with that. And Krasinski loves the movie. Right. He's been, you've been tweeting, haven't you? You're yes, like best yes, friends. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, no, no, no. But I mean, The Office is one of my favorite TV shows, Tom just as spent well the, as Arrested Tom Development. Tom just spent the weekend at the Krasinski Blunts compound. <laughs> I did not. Um, <laughs> We did meet outside. I got them in. Guy. I got them all three of those in. All those people are, are, are very cool. Very, very cool. Here is me. Um, here's what happens. I pour a, a glass of wine and I'm about to give it out to the crowd, but I've been um, warned by the authorities on many a night to not do that because uh, it turns out that uh, a lot of people in the front row are often not of drinking age. And so... <laughs> <laughs> um, at the last minute, I thought better of it, and I handed it to the security guy. And if you notice, he hands it to the girl. Yes, yes. So, legally, legally, you, you I'm absolved. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon wakes me up, and he says, "He said, do your brother's not here. You're an hour out of time. Don't do, don't film it. Put the camera down. We Whoa. somebody looks in your bug, and then no, there's Tom's not in there. And we looked over, like nobody had any idea. I was, I was." The whole thing was like a two-hour ordeal of, of figuring out where the fuck you were, and it was not a two-hour ordeal. It was a two. Who leaves friends at a bar? Like they should have like, hey Tom, we're leaving. No one did that. It's not their. You're not their responsibility. You're a fucking adult. I was just having a good time. What did he say? I'm sorry. I... Can we have to go? Am I fired or what? I love my hair in this shot. <laughs> Technically, yes. But you shouldn't... Why did you choose to film this? Because I, 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 just, I just wanted to get the emotion on my face of you firing me. Because I take it you're firing more than, than Brandon is. You are the one that's firing me. No, no, I allowed the firing to happen. I had, well, I had, obviously. I tried to stop you from getting fired many, many times. But this, I, I doubt that. There was a moment where it, just, it got to a point where, I, where it wasn't working. And I, I couldn't no longer put Brandon in that position. I don't blame Brandon for my firing. I kind of blame you. I can't force... Ugh. This, um... It was good for you. Ultimately, don't you realize that you getting fired from that job turned out pretty good for you, wouldn't you say? <laughs> the emotional scars are still there. This, sh this, this little moment, right, this Vandalire sequence, I, I want to give a shout out to my friend Matt Gossett, who, um, who kind of, like, early, super early on in the ending stage was, like, kind of cut this little moment together, and, and it was very emotional. And my brother loved it, and he wanted to. Shoot, to Matt helped you cut cut together the whole the sleeping on the bus and kind of, yeah. And that was true. That was one of the early moments that kind of like oh, that became a, yeah. a guide for you guys and 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 how what this movie was about. Here's Andre's head. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> sorry, buddy. <laughs> he was fine. He has a, he wears a lot of like what's the what's the stuff that it's a Dapper Dan Dapper Dan or, so uh, Brill cream, but I think he uses Dapper Dan. Is Dapper Dan a real thing? Or I is think that it from is. Yeah, Coen Brothers. Maybe. Okay. No, no, I think it is a real thing. Anyway, his hair was fine. 
His neck was broken, but his <laughs> hair was great. That's me, a typical day at the office. <laughs> I want to say for the record, I don't think Brian is actually sleeping in this. Because his glasses I think he are is. on. He's wearing glasses. Nobody wears glasses people when wear, they sleep. I like this shot because it looks, it looks like people are dead. Look, he's not asleep. He looks like he's, he's got dead his glasses in a, on. in a coffin, though. I, if, you ever been, if you're lucky enough to be on a tour bus, what I love about... Where you sleep, they, they, it looks morbid. It looks like you're dead in coffins. They have like frilly drapes that you like pull back. Mm -hmm. um, I just, that's. I just got in a striped shirt. Um, that's weird. I do look, the way my hands are crossed, I definitely look, look dead. Ah, the road going by. Actually, that last shot, by the way, was not the original airport shot. Uh, our producer, Craig Charland, who was a major, major help with making this movie, he shot me at an airport, and we just used that shot for me getting fired. Mm. Um, there's mom's, there's, there's a little, that's mom's painting studio. It's just... Um, it does sort of like, uh, she focuses on floral slash abstract expressionism. Yeah, I like this one. These are, these are some of my pastels that... Well, I got some questions. Uh, let me sit down. Just to, uh, off the top of your head, how do you think Matt and I are different? I think you going back and asking our parents questions would have set the movie, may, may, in helped fact, us figure out what the movie's about. And I will say that was this Marshall, Marshall Curry, who is a good friend of mine. I've worked with him for, for 12 years, um, way before he was making movies or we were in a band. He helped us edit this, and he was like, you need to go interview your parents. So um, Marshall Curry and his, his close collaborator, um, editor, um, Matt Hamachek, um, really helped us out figure out like how to how to get the arc working and they were like you need to go interview your parents and and it did it t definitely like uh, changed the or the whole idea of what the film should be about and anyway. mo and mom is pretty awesome yeah that's our mom that is uh i think you did well i don't did you and, and speaking she's very honest both our parents are very honest but also very very uh, unconditionally supportive um like but, but, but truthful. And she's, and, and just cinematically, it's like the brightest shot in the movie since like <laughs> in the beginning of the movie. It's like, it's a breath of fresh air and yeah. it feels bright and sunny and... Here, look, 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 look. This, these are my um, inspirations that I said. This was Matt's art, which is very abstract. What minimal. is in the background? In the, in the earlier shot one, before I pan up to my, sh to my drawings, for our drawings, there's a self-portrait that you made of yourself in high school. Um, if people pause it, um, with, it's, it's, a, so, shot, it's oh, a, yeah. a shot of my mom looking up at these drawings. You'll see in the background, it kind of, it's kind of cut off of a self-portrait that Matt did of himself. Mm. Highly detailed, incredibly intricate and perfect. Um, it, looks, a lot. it looks exactly like yourself. You did a really good job. I know, I was good. <laughs> Eating a leg. Yeah. Yeah, we should have talked more about that. I was a big Calvin and Hobbes fan. I, never, I was never a comic book, like a superhero comic book fan. I never had any comics, but Sunday comics were my thing, and like everybody, Calvin and Hobbes was my, was my jam when I was a little kid. This is Dad in our barn. Dad, his, he's a lawyer. Um, he's actually retired now, but he was... He went to law school, I think, when my, sis, my, when my mom was pregnant with my sister, um, and because he realized he needed to get a job and and so so he became a lawyer and I don't think he was a great lawyer but I don't think being a lawyer was anything he ever would have wanted to do no um, but he he had a family and he's like I need to do something so he spent his entire life um, he actually would sometimes suffer from panic attacks just like and, and he he was a you know he would litigate in front of or, you know or go to trial in front of you know, rooms full of people, and, and public speaking was something he hated, um, but he did it for, for, for 40 years or whatever. Because he had a family. Because um, he had a family. 
I think, and a vice he took very good care of. And I, I, I think he, if, like, if he would have uh, not had the pressure of trying to figure out how to make, he would probably would have been some kind of artist or a, yeah. or a sculptor. He's sculpting now. He's doing a lot of sculpting, and he would have been a craftsman of some kind. Probably not a lawyer. He's a great lawyer. Nothing against lawyers. He he was proud of himself, and he was a good lawyer. But um, it's both our parents gave up. A lot to raise a family, yeah. um, and now they're in their later years. They are pursuing the things that 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 kind of chasing their mm -hmm. their their own personal creative whims, and they built a life that we could do that mm -hmm. um, for ourselves. So we were grateful. And what my mom just said right before that was that's always major pressure you put on any kid. You're and my you most, most talented, talented and most creative. She still believes that. And then when your brother's a rock star, like a legitimately a rock star, your older brother, it's like you, you don't buy it. So this is, we were in the house. I actually, this is above where Aaron uh, lives. Like, mm -hmm. we all lived above Aaron. Um, this is Isla's, or my, our daughter's playroom, as you just heard me say. Isla became my best friend in this, in, and I and I actually I, I'm still very close to Isla. At the moment, I still live in my brother's garage in Venice, California. You yeah, um, moved to Venice because I have been working on the movie, um, and she has become my pretty much my best friend. Um, <laughs> That's sweet. But she still doesn't like Star Wars yet, but I'm, but I'm really loving. She does SpongeBob. love you, and I know you guys are best friends. But I think you should probably go find some friends your own age. Why? Um, well, she's got friends her own age. <laughs> I think it'd be good for you. <laughs> At this moment is when Corinne started helping me on the movie, and um, she sat behind me. She, she didn't realize in this scene is that she's basically going to be sitting behind me every single day, holding the camera year, for over a year. For over a year holding the camera. This basically the rest of the movie is basically Corinne behind the camera. And uh, she sat behind me every single day as I crafted scenes together and we'd work actually worked really well together. Um, we just picked out some of the most awful, you know, and, and funny moments, you know, to put in the movie, but it was a good time. This up in the upper left is a drawing by your friend who did that drawing? John Bradowski. John Bradowski. Actually did the Terminator and actually Halford and Jason on the, the pink paper. Halford and Jason. Um, he did both of those pictures. Actually, you that whole that wall is, you pointing to the, the whole. Screen. Those two little black circles on the left Tommy side of the screen. Pointing the screen. No one sees you. Yeah, pointing. I know. Black. Those two black stickers are from Publico. That's Paul Kors's Publico Art Gallery in Cincinnati, Ohio. Anyway, that's a. Uh, I like this. I like the fact that like these are the the, the, the scenes with band guys in them, which you have six post-it notes that are <laughs> band guys. Actually, there's little photographs. There's, there's photographs on the right side of the screen. That's from Wages of Sin. Those are production stills from a Barbarian movie. And that's okay, so the guy on the other side of the screen. Tom had no idea what he Randy was Randy Glandorf. Uh, it's, it's all my good friends. And, and Dwayne Dunn from, uh, from, from The Dirt on His Nails. All my old movies, all my old inspirations. Okay. It's a big inspirational scene here. No, that's cool. All I'm saying is that it's, it's impossible for me to, to give you any feedback on the movie at all by just looking at these post notes. It I looks interesting. It looks like you've got an interesting movie. Well, you know, thank you. It became very interesting. <laughs> Are you reacting to me in the movie or me here sitting next to you? It's very emotional for me right now. <laughs> I'm sitting right here. This is a, this was recorded like a long time ago. Tom's wearing a Celesta t-shirt there? Celestia t-shirt. It's a French black metal band. I really wish we could. I was about, could I was about thing and 300 zoom in. pounds overweight. Okay, so then, we're zooming in on some of Tom's drawings. If we could zoom in on some of the other drawings around the room, this was the least disturbing. <laughs> the other ones had like, like weird aliens with penises coming out of their their eyeballs and stuff. And Each one had a bullet hole in its head, though. They all had bullet holes. <laughs> Here we are. We are um, up at the Clubhouse Studios, and um, we're starting to work on um, Trouble Will Find Me. This is, we had no idea what we were going to call it at that point. This song, um, without Tom actually knowing, this song was inspired a lot by, by Tom. I Should Live in Salt. Um, and, and I, I it, it's, I'm very it's honored. Salt. I think any national fan would want a song about themselves, and I'm very honored that it's kind of about me, but 
I have to say, it's like, why such a sad song? It's not a sad song, but Tom thought it was a something. It was about some sort of troll that lived in a salt kingdom, kingdom of the salt world. He, it's not what it's about, Tom. Well, if you listen to the lyrics, that's what it's. It's not somebody that lives in the salt. Yeah, that's the only part, but that's, that's the only way. You see, you interpret things in one way, and then the first way you think that you're like, oh, that must be about somebody that lives in salt. Who would live in salt? Possibly a troll. And a guy must, that, he the, must be the a, only living survivor of Sodom. I should live in salt is, could be about a lot of things. It's not automatic. You, you're arguing with me about a song that, that is not about what you think it's about, and I'm telling you, because I wrote it's a man, it. It's a man that, that is stuck in the salt mines in, somewhere in Poland. It's not what it's about. It's, a, it's about a soul survivor <laughs> living in salt. Okay. Actually, this meant a lot to me when, what Scott was saying to me right here. Yeah, it's a good point. The movies are hard to make. Okay, so this was terrible. This was terrible. This is one this of the worst moments worst. of my life. Well, not this moment. <laughs> what happens next? It's true. I was so <laughs> upset about what... You know, I, I think people are, are going to be surprised at what they see, um, and now nah, I mean it doesn't have a twist ending, but it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I think um, it's, fa it's fast paced, it's colorful. It's colorful. Um, it's got some. I put some of my music in there. I still have that shirt. I don't know too much. I, that that's my old shirt. Was it? Tom, did you ever get in touch with that girl? Actually, um, no, no. Um, what girl were you talking about, by the way? Sharon Van Etten. She, by the way, she had a boyfriend at the time. Yeah, for the record, Tom never dated Sharon Van Etten. Um, no. She was incredibly awesome and sweet and totally giving her time. I had a crush on her. I think every, like, crew member had a crush on her. I don't have fucking anything, you know, and, and... Do you have dishes? No, I, I don't have dishes. Uh, Tom, still don't. Um, yep, Tom still has no dishes. Here. Don't you eat the stuff in the fridge? No, I don't even really take stuff for myself. Well, where, uh, where do you eat? Other than our, our food. Well, uh, um, you, can, you can get slices of pizza pretty cheap. I mean... See, this is why I think New York City is the good place for depressed people, because you can... Comfort for, food? Comfort food, and you realize when you go and walk to your favorite... Chinese restaurant or pizza place. It's like, at least you're depressed in New York City. Everybody's depressed here. Everybody's having a sh crappy day. In New York City? Yeah. And you go get a slice of pizza and you feel a little bit better, like I do, or two or three. Good point. I love my beard dander all over my shirt. Did you say beard dander? Beard dander. Dander? Isn't dander? That's for animals have dander. <laughs> you mean dander? Yeah, dander. Beard drift? Dander, dander. And I, actually, you know what? That might be the name for for all species. But I believe when they say dander, they mean animals. Like cats have dander. People are allergic. It's, it's to the same thing. No, no, no. People are allergic to dander. People aren't allergic to dandruff. Maybe some people are, but there's two two distinctly. It's like cat, I don't. It's cat skin. Dead dead cat skin. I think cells. I think it's a it's a singular and plural pronunciation. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you think dandruff is, is plural of dander? Like one piece of dander versus a, a big bunch of dander? Yes, which I is think called so. dandruff? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much no, no, sure that's not right. Like, <laughs> so this was really shitty, and it wasn't my fault because I really. There wasn't very much time to go. No, it wasn't your check. fault, but just like there was just like a bunch of things that could go wrong that you didn't. You didn't. Uh, you didn't check. And so things that could go wrong did. Thanks, Corinne, for shooting my feet. I was mostly my dirty feet. As you can see, Tom's RoboCop poster. That was he insisted. He took down. Um, that is that is an, that is that is a very very expensive Robo RoboCop poster, by the way. I know, but but the, you were you were moving into Isla's playroom for free, and you said, well, if I'm gonna have to if I have to stay in here, then I'm gonna put my poster up, and, and 
you, I'm, I'm, I'm editing in this place too. I might as well I know. I was live happy. here. You to make it your own. Make it. Get inspiration. Yeah. Have it. Have a little bit of trapping. No, I like. I'm, I, I love Robocop too. I'm just saying you were, you were militant about it. That is an original 1987. You know, I'm put on my Robocop poster. Original 1987 uh, theater print. A little detail about this scene that I've always enjoyed is that, as much as I've tried to explain to Tom that that Guinness cans, they, they, there's a whole apparatus that they do so that you pour it into a pint glass and it. And you don't you don't drink them like a Budweiser out of a can. It's, then why put them into a can? It's just a it's a it's a vessel with which to deliver the apparatus that allows but you, you to can. pour it into it. Never mind, man. I'm not breaking any rules. I'm moving I'm moving this microphone a little closer to my to my mouth. Yeah, great. This is the this is the p part of the movie where I I kind of check out. I don't like watching the rest of this. The scene. I love the bleeding towel in between us, though. I, actually, this is another of my favorite shots. It's like this it's red. I feel like subtle it's, gore. It's, it's, it's a subtle gore reference to the whole thing. Wait, what do you mean you you, you check out? Well, obviously we cut. This is you check out literally, like watching your own movie. This is when you kind of get bored with it. <laughs> Just I'd rather not watch this part. Oh, I know it's pain. It's probably hard to watch. Yeah, this is hard to watch. So basically, all like all the shit I had to return to people and see in the shot. It's like this that Dune book and that guitar for my friend. It's like stuff I still need to like return to people. Oh wait, you borrowed that stuff and you never gave it back? <laughs> no, it's hard for me to watch. Welcome to Paris. Ooh, this doesn't even look like my arm. Like it looks like another. Oh, there we go. It looks like another person in the room when I do this. <laughs> all right, sit down, Matt. Sit down. Matt Hamachek and Marshall I Curry say had a lot to do, uh, like, was helping me craft this part. They're really good. Right, that's true. I want to say for a record, I never wear that vest anymore, that waistcoat that you see me wearing there, because I um, did the New Yorker Festival, and uh, David Cross also was at the New Yorker Festival, and at the party afterwards, he made fun of that, that wa waistcoat um, um, <laughs> for a while, Why? for a long time. Why do you make, you're not wearing that because of David Cross made fun of David it? David Cross made fun of that waistcoat so much that I, I can't put it on anymore. I agree with him. Well, great. Why don't you, you and David Cross go hang out and leave me alone with my waistcoats? It's fine. We will. And I remember the first time we played at Mercury This is a shot by Yoon Ri, one of your... Yoon Ri shot this because he came to every one of our shows um, and he had all this old footage. There is not much old footage of our band playing because mostly we were incredibly ashamed of ourselves. Um, there's one of my favorite hairstyles. <laughs> I'm, I'm in, currently in the process of bringing it back. I love that though. That's great. Yeah, what happened in that scene was that uh, Lou Reed had just walked by. Um, and I think if you see him where you're smiling. Yeah. Uh, when we're outside in New York City, I think if you re read my lips, I think I might say Lou Reed. That was Lou Reed and Laurie Anderson or something like that. Maybe not. But that's what had hap just happened. And Yoon was filming. Anyway, the late great Lou Reed. They go, where were you? Like, where were you with? I was with Brian and Scott. They were on the bus. But you needed to do something in complete silence. Here's where she gets meta. I love my hair. <laughs> Having Matt as my older brother kind of sucks. It, it really yeah. doesn't. It, the only reason why this movie was made is because of The National. I, am not. I regret saying that. No, I can see why it sucks. But there was this one time when I was in high school and he was in New York and he called me up because he had a horrible nightmare and this nightmare was awesome. This is true and I couldn't believe he remembered this because it was like from 10 years ago. By some crazy guy in the street. And it, it meant a lot to me. It was a, it's, it's um, still means a lot to me because I'm, I'm, I live next yeah, to you every single dream. day and I still, I still hold on to this dream knowing every time, even though you yell at me about every single day, it's like I know you, 
You see something in me. <laughs> I know, that's what you just said in the movie. No. <laughs> but I'm serious. No, no, it's true. I I've never, believe, I never I felt powerful. Remembered that. I've, I've never felt powerful. I've never felt... I, I was shocked that you remembered that. I've never you. felt like an action hero. I've always wanted to feel like an action hero, and right. you dreamt. So here's Tom. You had a dream of me being an action hero. Yeah. This was when Tom was trying to make a different movie. Well, I was really inspired by Born Identity in this scene. In action. I was inspired by the kind of like, like, you wake up and the next day, who are you? And, and really, when you become famous, you don't know, you know, it's a little bit like, it's a reality check. Like, what the hell just happened to me? You know, who the hell am I now? I, am not I know who I am. I am not the national. You're, you're, you're adding national like, like cinematic yeah, melodrama to, to something that doesn't really, isn't really true. Uh, I believe it's true. <laughs> I want to believe. <laughs> I don't even think he even tried very hard. Though. I didn't try very hard because it's a stupid thing to say. Look at this. Look how serious I am here. That's mm. terrible. That yours is worse than mine. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. You're like all serious. Here's me carrying my laundry. Yeah. This is the Oslo Opera House in Oslo, Norway. This is both of our as ideas. As opposed to Oslo, Kentucky. You're having fun, though, you must admit. This was yeah, like, you, you were had, almost I more had in charge of, of fun this when scene. you were... You were having fun here. I you know. had a blast having I you around. I was totally was making fun. you do this. No, I was having fun, no doubt yeah. about it. If you watch the extras, you'll see Tom making me do tons of shit, and we had, I had a blast. By the way, this is um, our producer, Craig Charlin. This is his favorite scene. He, dem he really wanted this in the movie. He was fighting for it. That's why he put it in. No, it's, yeah, he was right. He drives me bananas that you will you will throw yourself away completely because of one or two things that you think about that that, that you think are wrong about you, and that's what breaks my heart. It's it, you gotta ignore those and, and lean towards the things that make you like yourself. Forget everything else. Okay, what does this mean? What the hell? What the hell does that? You know what mean? that means? I don't know. It means just. It you means, explained it to me. Explain it to me. It means you have to just keep moving forward and even and ignore your own failures and 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 just learn from your fa failures, but don't let your failures stop you. What do you mean? What does it mean? I don't know what it means. You put it in the movie. <laughs> What is, where is this? Where are you on a beach? Um, it, either that's either that's in L.A. here in L.A. or in, I, I kind of forget. I want to see more of that. So we, this was a controversial. Um, it was hard to figure out how to end the movie. We didn't want people to get up and leave. We want like that. My my director credit was going to be part as part of the narrative, right? As part of the movie. Yeah, but it's also, it's, it's, the movie kind of, you had to end it where you, you have to, you, you figure it out on your own, yeah. you know. But yeah. then, we, there's this moment of you, um, what's about to happen is you jump into the crowd and, and, and are, you know, sort of as my security guard. And, and uh, we always thought that was great. And, but ending the movie with that, moving right into it without that little credit, felt like, it felt weird, so we put the credit of it, like the movie's over, Tom made his movie, and then there's this sort of coda moment. This is in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love that I realized not too long ago. I think it's, I think it's, 
uh, I mean, th uh, people thought it was like, oh, it's Tom still working for Matt, and that's not what that's not what we kind of saw the scene uh, meaning. It's more like we're just kind of connected in the world. Um, but I don't know. It's ambiguous. It's like the end of Graduate. Minus Catherine Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I, I like to think this is the like the end of. Uh, No, oh, I mean, I don't. I've Predator. never seen an ending like this. This is an ending into my movie. This is how I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, Ira from uh, who? In the background? From Yola Tango. Yes. Yeah. Some Unfortunately, now you have to one-up yourself every time. You've gone up elevators, you've stood in garbage cans, you've stood in a ceiling. Um, I do. The only I thing you got to do now is like somehow go underwater, and, I think. Go underwater and somehow catch a plane. Those two the During things are left. During the end of the song, <laughs> those are the only thing that's left. Yeah. Yep, that's me. The the end shot here um, is inspired by yep, John me. Candy and all, a lot of John Hughes, John Candy movies. Yes, you love you always. John Candy always. So John Hughes Uncle ends Buck, his movies with John. John trains, Candy planes, smiling. and automobiles. Both of those, they do that. Uh, those two for sure, and then with John Candy kind of freeze frames. There's another one I know. John I, Candy I'm, freeze I'm, frames I'm, I'm at the end of all his movies yeah. with a smile and Tom. And that, good good smile. Tom stole that device. It was effective. Here. So here, once again, Rob Halford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Halford, for letting us use this this song. It is, uh, yeah, it's a great song. It, should we comment on the um, on the uh, credits? Sure. They actually, some people actually. I I've listened to a That's lot. That's Paul Shu rec recording. Will Will Cox, Will Cox. He <laughs> put up. He put up with a lot of bullshit. By the he way. Did. <laughs> and uh, we just read out. And what here's are Rachel. Here's our sister. And, uh, let's read aloud what people are seeing right in front of their eyes. This this film features Matt Berninger, Aaron Desner, Brian Devers. I can't read them all. No, the, the uh, there's Craig Charlin who helped us uh, with the story and was a producer on the thing. Jeff Gilbert. Uh, I can't. We can't go through all these things. We can't. Andy Croner. No, no. Uh, I think we so should what, stop talking. Let's wrap it up here. No, no. I, what I don't okay, like. Let's wrap it up. Here, here's, here's. I, what I don't like about movies is that they, like right when the credits start, a lot of commentaries just end. Right. So, w what are your lasting thoughts? My, my final thoughts on the film. Yes. Uh, I wish the credits were a little moved a little quicker. <laughs> uh, um, my final. No, I think that only like the, the, this is a. The, the right kind of movie for our band. It's like, um, I think in, in a funny way, you, 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 uh, you manage to make the movie that's the kind of perfect, you know, fit for a, a film about our band. Because it's about, a, it's not, it's just about people trying to figure out how to be people in the world. Well, what do you think? What are your final thoughts? Tonight? I'm just happy. It's almost over, done. you better hurry. I'm just happy that I made the damn thing. Okay, that's great. And goodbye, everybody. Bye.